Hello to all and welcome to War Thunder Aviation. Now, as of just yesterday, version 1.39, known as Flaming Arrows, for War Thunder was introduced. However, we're not going to talk about any of the aircraft that was introduced and talk about one that's been in the game for a long time now, known as the B-25. Now, the B-25 is an American aircraft in the game, and... Oh, wait, wait a minute, hang on. Just in the review of the B-25? Yeah, that's right. Wait, it's, it's not a B-25? What do you mean it's not a B-25? Yeah, it is. What, what the hell are you on about? This is obviously... What, this is ridiculous. Well, news just in, it turns out that this is not a B-25 bomber, and is in fact the Halifax B Mark III-A. Who knew? But seriously though, if I had a pound for every time I heard someone say, well, isn't that just a new B-25, I'd probably be, well, about five pounds richer, but that's still around five pounds more than I should be, as you will come to find out as the video goes on. But all that banter aside, let's have a look at the aircraft itself and see what its history is. Now then. In 1937, the first mock-ups of the Halifax bomber were assessed, and by 1938, the first prototypes were built. These prototypes showed promise, and in 1938, the RAF placed their first order for 100 Mark I Halifaxes off the drawing board. However, over the Halifax's service, it went through many changes, such as changing the Merlin engines to the Bristol Hercules, and changing the front gunner to the Bombardier position with one singular Vickers K machine gun in the front nose. However, it wasn't until the Halifax B Mark III that it really was starting to hone in on its abilities, of course, this variant having the most of built of 2,091. But before I stop talking about the Halifax's history, there is just one thing I wanted to make clear. Now, at the start of this video, I made the joke that I thought this was the B-25 because they're very similar, and indeed they are. Probably the most obvious similarity between them is their near-identical fuselage and turret placement. So, when I looked up the Halifax to make this Should You Get, I was expecting its history to be something along the lines of during the war, the Americans gave the British the fuselage, and like things like the Sherman Firefly, basically the British take the design, add some British guns to it, and then call it a new British variant, which is something we did a lot during the war, because very simply put, we just didn't have enough time, nor enough people, nor enough labour to make these fast enough. But to my surprise, if anything, it is the complete opposite. Now, you see, the first flight of the Halifax was in the 25th of October 1939, when the first flight of the B-25 was on the 19th of August 1940. Not only that, the Halifax was introduced in the 19th of November 1940, when the B-25 was introduced during 1941. So, actually, the Halifax isn't a copy of the B-25. If anything, the B-25 is a copy of the Halifax. But here is where it gets even weirder, because I tried looking this up, thinking that now, well, okay, the B-25 is a copy of the Halifax then, but no matter how hard I searched, I could not find anything stating that either of these aircraft were a copy of each other at all. In fact, they had absolutely nothing to do with each other, and the fact that they are so identical and were made during give or take the same time is a complete coincidence. Now that is a conundrum. But enough about all that history crap, and let's get on to how well it performs in War Thunder. And the simple answer to that question is... Bloody amazing. 
Now, the first thing I wanted to talk about with this aircraft is something you've already seen, which is the armour on this aircraft. I mean, it is an absolute flying tank. Now, it is true that in history, this aircraft was always complimented for its rugged design, and for how it could have massive damage sustained, and yet it will still continue to fly as if there is little to no problems whatsoever. And I, let me tell you when I say that this game does it full justice on that front. It just absolutely tanks hit, and as you'll see later on in this video, the amount of damage this thing can sustain is just unbelievable. And this aircraft's ruggedness and high durability is greatly complemented by its armament. This being a maximum of eight 7.7 .7 Browning machine guns capable of firing at once, which, firing into the front of most enemy fighters, it doesn't even matter that you're at a 4.0 battle rating and you're only firing 7.7mm weapons. The amount of fire you can get downrange is more than enough to stop just about any aircraft you're going to come up against. And keep in mind that for most of these clips I'm going to be showing you, I'm only using the default rounds. You know, the really shitty British ones? Yeah, I'm only using them to take out the aircraft. The only clip I'm going to show you in this entire video that is seeing me using universal rounds rather than default was the first clip of the video. And as you saw in that video, it seemed like almost every single round that's connected set the target on fire. And that's because the 7-7 seven, seven Browning machine guns have a very high fire rate, and all it takes is one incendiary round to hit that fuel line, and boom, the whole thing's on fire, you've gained yourself a kill, job done. But surely, I hear you say, surely, at a 4.0 battle rating, it is inferior to the B-25, and indeed, in some ways, it is. Such as, the B-25 has 50 caliber weapons instead of the 30 caliber that this aircraft has, meaning that, of course, it's going to pack more of a punch. And the second thing the B-25 has over the Halifax is its armor. The B-25 has a lot more armor, and therefore it makes it a lot more resilient on the more central fuselage areas. And also it means that crew inside the B-25 don't get knocked out as much as in the Halifax, which is something I have actually noticed. And the third major advantage the B-25 has over the Halifax is the fact that the B-25 not only has a lot more defensive gunners, but also has five 50 caliber machine guns on the front for the pilot, which is very good when ground strafing, or indeed actually attacking other aircraft. But Danjin aren't quite insane enough to put the Halifax at a 4.0 battle rating without it having its own advantages. Okay, they are actually insane. Yep, okay, the Year 2M does still exist at a 4.0 battle rating alongside the Peshkar 8. Yeah, okay, good point. But even so, the Halifax does actually have some advantages over the B-25, such as... The Halifax's tail and dorsal turrets have four guns each rather than the B-25's two. This, although means that they are actually of lower caliber, it does mean that when you're firing at an enemy, since more rounds are going down range, and indeed at a faster fire rate, then it means that you have a lot higher chance of setting an enemy on fire. Also, the Halifax's tail gunner is a sort of pod-like turret. Now, aircraft like the B-25's tail gunner are a fixed turret, which means you can only really shoot an enemy if they are directly behind said turret. However, due to this pod-like device that the British use, it means that it can turn roughly 180 degrees horizontally and around 90 degrees vertically. So, of course, this will mean that it is, has a lot more use. It means it can fire sideways as well as it can fire downwards, it can fire upwards, which are, of course, all things that aircraft like the B-25 simply cannot do. Well, I say downward, but for some reason there's some kind of bug or glitch or something like that with this uh, version of the aircraft, because for some reason it can't fire any lower than about horizontal. 
and I legitimately have no idea why it does this, so hopefully that's going to get patched soon. Another advantage being that the B25 has a maximum payload of £3,000, when the Halifax has a maximum payload of £12,000. That's four times the amount of the B25. And one of its last major advantages is the fact that it has four engines rather than the B25 too. This means that it's not only faster, and I believe it also has better acceleration, but also it's a lot lighter aircraft anyway, so it means that it is a lot more effective at getting in quickly and then getting out quickly. Not to mention, having more engines will mean that you can actually lose one of the engines on this aircraft, and as long as it is pretty much aced and you don't have a bomb load, you can still fly it fairly well. So what's going on in this game? Well, the Ki-43 is eyeing up my rear, but then he gets set on fire, like everyone does. Eight Browning machine guns, more enough to set anything on fire. And then his friend, with clearly world-class intelligence, decides to do the exact same thing. Of course he does, standard Japanese pilot. And almost gets shot down here, but then his friend comes in and takes my attention. And then flies, Jesus Christ, just under my wing, what the hell are you doing? I can't tell if that's a kamikaze or not, but that was still one of the best dodges of my life. This guy continues to keep firing at me, but not for long, as uh, his pilot ceases to be. And that leaves just his friend left, who's trying to scissor me. But, fortunately, I'm an absolute amazing shot with a dorsal turret, and this guy gets set on fire. And I can't tell if he's now just trying to ram me or not, but either way, he doesn't get the chance, and goes straight down. So yeah. That is proof that this aircraft is absolutely amazing at taking hits. You can see this engine, the engines on this thing are leaking, the wings and fuselage are absolutely destroyed, and the best part of all is this is the first ever match I flew out in this aircraft in. That's right, this is actually a completely stock aircraft, and I've actually just taken my fourth kill. So. As I try to limp my way back to base, it's probably not going to make it, as as you can see, it is just reacting ridiculously violently, kicking me up all the time, and making it near impossible for me to do anything. I believe my t uh, my tail gunner's dead at this point, so that only leaves my dorsal turret and front gunner, so basically it only leaves my turret. And as I'm just trying to limp back to base now, I do my absolute best, and I, I really did think I was going to make it. Against all the odds, I really thought this was actually possible, but unfortunately, as you're about to see, it, it just was never going to happen, really. A real unfortunate, because it was an absolutely legendary match on my behalf. I'm really proud of it. So, there you go. So, before I get shot out of the sky, I might as well give my opinion of the uh, Halifax, and indeed, if you should get it or not. So, should you get the Halifax B Mark 3A? Absolutely. What an amazing aircraft. Absolutely tanks hits, can dish an absolute hell load of damage to just about any aircraft you're going to come up against at this battle rating, and it's all in all one of the funnest aircrafts I have ever played on this game. I mean, it might even be in my top 10. It is just that much fun. So, I thank you very much for watching, uh, please make sure to like, comment and subscribe, that's always appreciated, and uh, yes, I'll see you then. Ah yes, this is more the sort of combat I'm used to. Uh, load the cannons, fire off the starboard deck, that's right. <laughs>
Ah, uh, yes, firing 7mm machine guns at a Peshka 8 is definitely a good idea. Yeah. Well, we don't seem to be doing any damage whatsoever. Not to worry, just going to do the standard aircraft procedure for being in a bomber and firing at another bomber, which is, of course, to step one, fly under the opposing bomber, uh, and indeed slightly ahead. Step two, get on your dorsal turret, and step three, fire at the fuselage until you shoot the pilot. Easy. Whoever said the Peshka 8 was hard, eh? <laughs> uh.